Hello there and welcome. This is Terry Magalakis presenting to you episode 11 of the Thought Movement Program. And listen, I'd like to say thank you very much for being a part of this 11-part series of the Thought Movement Program. And today, let's get started on the Law 10, which is called the Law of Obedience. And today, let's start with a quote with by Theodore Roosevelt, who quoted about the Law of Obedience. He said that obedience of the law is demanded, not asked as a favor. And when we listen to this quote, especially uh, trying to understand the law of obedience once I go through it today, what does that quote really mean to you? Really take it in and keep it in the back of your mind while we go through today's episode. And with the law of obedience, I'd like to say that, you know, we have been taught in this world to obey from a very, very young age, you know, to obey your parents, to obey your boss, to obey the government and to obey the laws that are set around the world. And um, this is a man-made society, has man-made rule laws to have a sense of control over every single one of us. We still are in this bubble of society that is called life. And, lo- and life pretty much has had a very bad rap. Life has a, life has a very certain stigma being put on by others who want to confine us, who want to limit us, who want to restrain us, who want to restrict us, because certain people who try and control it don't like people stepping out of line. And our mistakes are largely due to the fact that we have obeyed more the laws of society than the laws of the universe. This is why your certain situation is the way that it is because you have obeyed the wrong certain laws. You have obeyed the laws of society. And we are, and when we are dependent on obeying these laws, this is the make or break for our failures or for our successors. We have gotten to a point that not only we are dependent on it, but we make our priority in our lives to obey the the laws of society and my question to you is is that the main main laws of society that we have made a priority of that we have been dependent on and we obey them what if these laws are are wrong overall what if the laws that are man-made are all wrong what if the laws of society are there to distract you from obeying the true laws of the universe And the vast majority never take the time to put forth the effort to develop an awareness for these universal laws. And the mistake that we have done as human beings is to seek, find, and acquire abundance and happiness through various external resources. It's more of the outward appearances of people, events, and objects. These are the three things that people go out and look for if you're a successful person. Events that are basically very uplifting and objects or materialistic things. These are the things that people are looking for. And so doing this, becoming so out of balance that they uh, become depleted and basically what I call a scattered um, um, consciousness sort of resulting in a physical, mental and emotionally overwhelm, more of exhaustion, depression, anxiety, fear, doubt and worry and a host of other counterproductive effects that only serve to create precisely the opposite of the outcome desired. And surrendering to the universe is a great feeling. Basically, you're giving yourself to the laws of the universe, not the laws of society. And life was meant to be easy, and a, and a bang in your inner guy, which will only lead to your happiness, is fun. And when we understand the laws, the universal laws, and live in harmony with these laws in our daily life, we could, and no, I'm not saying could, we can achieve great success for our own lives. When we obey these laws, these universal laws, we are governed by the nature order, which automatically removes all the challenges and obstacles from us along the way. And with the nature order, the universe will answer to us for every need that we want. And if you or I plant thoughts of worry, the law will obey, uh, we obey will give us something to worry about. It will produce more and more circumstances to fulfill our focus, which is worry. And whatever law you obey will in turn serve you. The more important thing then is to know what to obey. The old saying goes, as ye, sell, uh, as ye sow, sow, shall you reap. And basically the seeds that we plant within our mind, whatever the condition may be, negative or positive, will produce more and more circumstances, experiences and its perspectives around the particular seed. You are not going to get a positive seed out of a negative seed. It defeats the purpose of the law of nature and the law of obedience. And today, human beings are obeying the labels and conditions that have been set upon us from others, rather than us obeying our own soul and spirit. The purpose of the law of obedience is to learn properly about you know, what we choose to obey and by obeying what will serve us even better. And unfortunately, a lot of humans are obeying things that are problems and misconceptions to our highest good. If we were to go deeper, 
you know, humans who obey these problems and misconceptions make them their priority and they will do anything to protect for what they believe in, whether it's negative or positive. And the worst of it is when human beings obey something, you know, where obey something is not only of negative nature, but something of evil nature. And this brings me to a story by, um, you know, uh, basically through Stanley Milgram and uh, he's basically the law of obedience. And basically one of the famous studies of obedience in psychology was carried out by Stanley Milgram. Now, Stanley Milgram was a psychologist at Yale University and you know, conducted an experiment focusing on the conflict between obedience to authority and personal um, consciousness. Now, before we get to the experiment, let's discuss Stanley, Stanley Milgram's obedience teachings. Milgram pointed out that in studying obedience, one must take conceptions of authority and translate them into personal experience. In other words, in an abstract, clinically look at obedience explains nothing. Basically, Milgram suggested that obedience is something that is deeply ingrained enough to override personal emotions such as guilt, sympathy, or a belief in moral conduct. And to support all this, he quoted that, when you think of a long and gloomy history of man, you'll find more hideous crimes have been committed in the name of obedience that have be, ever been committed in the name of rebellion. If you doubt that, read you know, William Shira's Rise in the Fall of the Third Reich. The German officers' corps were brought up in the most rigor, uh, basically the most evil of code of obedience. In the name of obedience, they were a party to and assisted in the most wicked large scale actions in the history of the world. And this brings me to the experiment that he conducted back in 1961 to 1963. The desire came when Milgram wanted to conduct a scientific experiment on how people can ca are capable of making others go through suffering and even harming them because they were ordered to do so by a higher authority. And the first initial thought came when he started to read up on the soldiers who had an, who did in, inhumane acts towards innocent civilians in World War II. His focus was primarily on Nazi Germany and the Nazi soldiers. And Stanley Milgram was interested in how easily ordinary people can be influenced into committing, um, in committing acts of inhumane sort of ways. For example, German, Germans in World War II. Now. The one thing that Milgram believed that the tendency to obey cancels the person's ability to behave morally, ethically, and sympathetically. Now, obeying the negative cancels out the positive. Before the experiment was conducted in 1961, a year before the trials had begun of the war crimes committed by Adolf Eichmann and the rest of the soldiers who were still alive after World War II. During the trial, the defense was that put forward was often based on obedience and that they were just simply following orders from their superiors. So in other words, these were ordinary people, just like you and me, who were just doing their jobs. They, know, they have no particular evil ideas of their own, they just blindly did as they were told. And after the experiment was conducted in 1963, and I do encourage you to look up Stanley Milgram's experiment of behavioral study of obedience, the conclusions that Milgram found was that the obedience to authority is inbuilt in all of us from the way we are brought up. Like I said, parents, teachers, other, f other family figures that are higher than us, government, etc, etc. People obey orders from other people if they recognize their authority as morally right or illegally based. We learn about authority and obedience in a, in a variety of situations from, like I said, family, schools, and even the workplace. Now, from my observation, looking at obedience and its request in a negative or destructive circumstances, the proper thing to do would be to obey, right? Now, yet to obey becomes an evil act. Even though you were ordered to do so, you still committed the act. Still, it is the disobedience that we generally see as being wrong, not the act of obeying. And this is where the confusion lays, because basically from what we have been taught, the law of society has taught us about uh, disobedient, uh, disobedience. It says that disobedience we see as being wrong, as for obedience we see as being right. And what I found overall as the law of obedience, what it states, and if you want to write this down, go for it, the law of obedience states, if we are disobedient to the law, then we, then we are refusing to do what we know is wrong. We must obey for what is right. And I'm not just talking about the law of obedience. I'm talking about the other, all the other laws in this 11-part series as well. Now, a lot of people don't understand, but Aldith Eichmann, the person that was set on trial, was the man who, unfortunately, was the man who invented the Holocaust. Now, could you imagine a man like this had to obey superior figures that were above him 
that they were telling him to do this. This is what we're going to do. And he had to obey. And this is the where he had told on trial, told the people of the jury and on trial that I was just obeying from the orders above. So to conclude, so to any so an individual might easily become confused through the law of basically the obedience. But Milgram believed that people who are obeying an authority figure do not see themselves as in control. They are merely a tool or extension of authority and therefore not responsible for their own actions. The law has only but one fault. Happiness, peace and prosperity. That's it. We are the authority figures. No one else. No one ever no one ever can take control over you knowing that if they push you into doing something wrong you can take control of your own life we are the authority figures we are the people to make a choice and this creates more opportunities for ourselves we are the ones that create reality through our own thoughts we are the ones in charge so the ultimate question to you is this and i will leave you on this note today if you are if your thoughts are negative would you obey knowing that they are wrong what do you do and on that note, I'd like to say thank you very much for listening into episode, I do believe, episode 11 of the Law of Obedience. Stay tuned for the last um, episode of the 11-part series of the Thought Movement Program. Until then, thank you very much.